Each year, as winter blankets most of North America in snow and ice, a migration takes place. Not of birds, but of people. They're called snowbirds, and their destination? Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix is known for its blistering summers. However, it goes through a metamorphosis and becomes a winter paradise, drawing hundreds of thousands of visitors, and some of those call Phoenix home during the winter. But why Phoenix? What is it about our desert city that attracts thousands of snowbirds every year? Let's start with the obvious, the weather. When much of the country is shivering, Phoenix basks in perfect temperatures. Most consider the perfect time to visit the Phoenix area is between November and April, when the temperatures are in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. This just so happens to be the time that is known as snowbird season. But who can blame them? Back home, it's all shovels, snow, and ice, and heating bills. But here, it's sunshine and shorts. Now, this is also one of the things that keeps those of us that live here year-round here because we are all waiting for this perfect time of year when our weather is absolutely spectacular. But it's not all just about the number of sunny days. It's also about the drier desert air, the stunning sunsets, the evening walks, and the events. Phoenix comes alive in the winter with a plethora of events. From the vibrant First Friday art walks, to the Phoenix Open, to the Bear Jackson Car Auction, to the Arabian Horse Show, and don't forget baseball's spring training. There is something for everyone. We see a huge uptick in the number of people that are here during the winter months. It's like the whole city gets an energy boost. And when you're driving around, don't be surprised if you see sometimes more out-of-state plates than you do Arizona plates. Now for snowbirds, Finding the perfect place to call home is critical. Phoenix is a much bigger city than many realize. When I've had buyers come in town looking for a second home, but they're not exactly sure where they want to live, I'll usually sit down with them and pull out a map just to show them where all the cities are in relation to what they consider Phoenix, just to show them how big it is and talk about how far everything is away from one another, how far it's going to take if you live in Gilbert, how far it's going to take if you live in Scottsdale to get different places around the valley. And this is the reaction that I usually get from them. We did not realize that Phoenix was this big. And if they've got friends that live here already in a specific city, I'll usually ask them, like, do you want to be close to your friends when you move here? Because if they do, that's kind of kind of dictate where we're going to look. Because in that map conversation, that's when I start talking about, okay, if your friends live at this dot and you live over here, it's going to take about 45 minutes to get to and from one another's homes. Now, if that's okay, great. If it's not, then we really need to dive in and really hone in on where it is that you wanna live. Now, many of my clients that are coming looking for a second home, they probably already have a friend or two that has a home here. So they usually wanna be close to those friends. So finding that place doesn't take as long of a period of time because we know they wanna be somewhat close to their friends and that's where we kinda of hone in. Then other times I've had two different sets of friends come to me and say, we both wanna buy homes in the Phoenix area. Can you help us? So. Again, we dive into the lifestyle and where do they want to be, and now we've got two people, but we're trying to find a home in some sort of the same location. And when it comes to second homes here in the valley, what's interesting is, is that there are parts of the valley that I can tell you a lot of people from a state live here. It's just a crazy phenomenon that's kind of happened. They kind of gravitate towards one another, and they don't always know one another. But if you live in like Wisconsin or Minnesota, I can kind of tell you there's a lot of people from those states that live in these specific areas, and sometimes it's multiple across the valley. Now, that does not mean that you have to live there just because people from your home state live in that area. I just think it's kind of an interesting fact. The biggest thing that I need to understand so that I can better help people when they're looking for a second home is, what do you like to do when you're not at home? What do you like to do outside the home? What are your hobbies? Do you like to play golf? Do you like to play tennis? Do you like to hike? Do you like to play pickleball? Do you like to shop? Do you like art? Do you like restaurants? Maybe you like all of them, but I want to know everything so that I can really help you get in the best location for you. Now, once I know this and your budget, I can really help us hone in on the specific neighborhoods that we should look in for you. The good news is there are multiple different great locations all across the valley and a range of options, anywhere from condos to luxury private estates. Now, if I haven't said this yet, I want to make sure that I let you in on a little tip. When you hear people say the valley, that is them referring to everything in the Phoenix area. Now, besides the perfect weather here, accessibility is a very big factor. And thankfully, the Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport offers multiple direct flights from a lot of different places, which makes it really easy to get in and out of the Phoenix area 
hassle-free. Now, I have had clients that are looking for a second home here in the Phoenix area, but this isn't the only place that they're looking. They're still trying to narrow down and figure out which city is the right city for them to buy a second home in. So oftentimes they're looking in maybe Palm Springs or the Palm Desert area. And some, while they come to Phoenix, think, well, maybe I should check out Tucson. When they start looking at what it's gonna take for them to get in and out of those other places, they fall off the list pretty quickly because it is not easy. Now, if I have clients that are coming from the East Coast, the other place that they're usually comparing us to is Florida. But again, flights to get into the Phoenix area are really easy and direct. Longer, but direct. And you don't have to buy hurricane insurance here. And for those that are looking to come from a state that's closer, like California, Nevada, or maybe even Colorado, our roads are well-maintained and it's mostly highway, so it's an easy drive. Now, some may be surprised by this, but many of the people that own a second home here are not fully retired. So oftentimes they will still have to travel back and forth to the state where they live primarily, maybe once a month or sometimes a little bit more often, which makes the direct flights really critical and a huge part of their decision. And if they are retired, some while they're here as a snowbird decide to travel and having that international hub right here at our Phoenix airport makes it so easy for them. Now to really be considered a snowbird by us locals, we look at someone who is renting for a month or more or owns a second home here. Now, if you're looking to rent, trust me when I tell you, it'll only be a few years before you start looking to buy. I have had multiple clients that have done that exact thing. They've rented maybe two, three years usually tops, and then they call me and they say, okay, we're ready to buy a house here. An interesting fact about the whole snowbird phenomenon is that it's growing, but it's not just growing with retirees. It's growing with the younger age groups. In fact, in an article in Forbes, they said this, this winter, 34% of Americans are considering or making plans to snowbird to various parts of the world. They also said, traditionally reserved for retirees, snowboarding is becoming available to younger individuals and families thanks to remote work and flexible work environments. What I see for some younger people doing the whole snowbird thing is that they're deciding to rent a home where their parents maybe already own a second home, but they're coming and they're renting in the, that same location so that they can be with their family during that time. But they are usually only staying for maybe two weeks a month if they can really stretch it so that they can enjoy the area with their family. In fact, in that same Forbes article, they talked about the snowboarding season and the length of time that people are renting, and they're saying that the average is about 42 days. Now, for anyone looking to stay any length of time, healthcare is important. And the Phoenix area is home to many world-class facilities and clinics, making it an excellent destination for snowbirds who may require some special attention while they're here. In fact, many people who are snowbirds that come to the Phoenix area actually save some of their procedures to have done here because our specialists and facilities are so great. Phoenix is the sixth largest city in the U.S., which means that it's drawing amazing doctors and specialists to our area, giving you a lot of options. Now, while we're talking about healthcare, something that you should look into before you come to any location for any length of time, you need to check with your healthcare provider and your health insurance to make sure that if you're here or when you're here, you can see any doctor that you would like without having to have a referral from a, your primary care doctor back home. Most should really be okay, but it's something for you to check into just to be sure. Something that really draws snowbirds to Phoenix, it just isn't tangible. It's a sense of community and the friendships that form, the feeling of escaping not just the cold weather, but the isolation, and let's be honest, the depression that can sometimes set in. Phoenix is not just a city. For many, it is a winter sanctuary, a place of warmth, and not just in climate. Many have said we initially came for the weather, but we've stayed for the people. Now, if you'd like to learn more about some of the best and worst neighborhoods in the Phoenix area, make sure you look at this video. As always, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.